The road ends in Dayton as far as Ohio High School basketball is concerned. This is Championship Sunday. Welcome into our coverage of Crestview and Arwig Landorf competing for state championships this afternoon and this evening. Hello, everyone. I'm Patrick Hamler, Mark Shine alongside me. And what an environment it has been at UD Arena. It has been, this has been a really fun weekend. It's been a really good weekend full of really good, high quality basketball. We got one more left, but these two games we had today so far, the three games have been very good games. Four divisions competing for state championship this morning. Uh, back behind us, Pickerington Central and Archbishop Hoban are warming up for their Division One title, but we are about the business of Divisions Three and Four. We're going to start with Division Four, Crestview. Crestview highlights brought to you by Van Wert Vision as we look at the Knights trying to wrap up a state championship. They're going up against Richmond Heights, though. Hey, they've only won 48 straight games. They're very, very talented, and we're going to see that talent really come forefront in the third quarter. Knights were in trouble early, but they battled back. Ren Sheets, turnaround hook, gets the friendly roll here. Turnover's a problem in this one, but Crestview able to hang on. Gavin Etzler, triple try is up and good. Knights down 10 to 2 early on, but they were able to come back and get this one a little closer. Carson Hunter, nice pass to Etzler, 18-footer is good. He had back-to-back -back assists on those two highlights we showed. Now working it around down low, Sheets in trouble, having to find someone open, and he does. Gets it to Hunter, and Hunter finishes. Now you're going to see another connection coming up here. Hunter going to find Etzler once again. Defense really tough, but able to thread the needle there. Gavin finished with seven points tonight. He, he did. Gavin had to work hard for everything he got. Got a dime dropped on him that time by uh, Carson Hunter. Nate Lickley here around the defense. Had a quiet weekend overall, but he hits the three here. Then a shot coming up on the way for Jared Harding. Harding, this was his basket here. Lickley with the steal. One of eight turnovers that they were able to force for Richmond Heights. You see Harding pull up two points for him. All four of those came on uh, assists from, Hunt, from Hunter. Then long three at the half here for Crestview. Mitch Temple sending that one. It was a nine point lead for Richmond Heights at the half. Thought maybe this builds some momentum, but man, did Richmond Heights flip the switch in the second half. In the third quarter, Richmond Heights had 29 points in 14 possessions. They had three empty possessions. They scored on the other 11. They put 29 points on the board in just 14 possessions. 70 to 26, your final Spartans go back to back. We competed. I thought we did a good job of handling their pressure. Uh, we, we hit some shots, but defensively we, we held them to one shot. Uh, they hit some shots, but we held them to one. And then going into halftime, hitting that half quarter, you think you got a little bit of momentum going there, and we were pretty juiced up. And just things really snowballed in the second half and, and kind of got out, got away from us quick. And they're a type of team that does that. You, you, you hear about it, how many they're going to go on runs, and, and you try to weather the storm, but they went on a run that obviously the third quarter was not good for us. Yeah, we knew it couldn't get away from us. They're not the type of team that we're going to be able to pick up full court and pressure. You know, the athletically, the, the skill that they have, they're they're very well coached and they're very good athletes and very good basketball players. So, you know, the goal coming into this, we talk about it over and over, is if you can get to the fourth quarter with a chance, give yourself a chance where you're under 10, I think the, the – Community support that we're going to have is going to get a little bit louder, and hopefully at that point they're going to play a little bit tighter because they're supposed to win. So obviously getting away from us, it wasn't a situation where we're going to pick them up full court and press them and get back in the game. That that wasn't going to be part of the game plan at all. Basically, when we saw it when we were younger, me and Carson were, I wasn't at Crestview yet, but we saw JV came on the state championship, and we just felt like just to have the chance to be here, it's be special. You know, just a couple of memories. I think being able to to win the regional championship. You know, you're playing a very good Marion local team, and it, it's a huge game. Everybody wants to go to state, and the stakes are so high. But these guys getting down 13 and 0 in that that game and battling back and, and giving us a chance to be here. And then obviously, uh, I'm super proud of them once we got here. We, we talked about it the whole week. Is when you get here, you want to play for a trophy. You want to have a chance to play on the last day. Some teams get here, and that's their goal is getting here. And these guys didn't. You know, they, they wanted to get here, win a game, and get to this game. Obviously, we wanted to win it all. Everybody wants to get here and win it all. But we wanted an opportunity to play for a trophy. So obviously, I think the regional championship games, you have a chance to play in the Final Four. It's what you grow up wanting to do. I, as a young boy, watching my dad be here, that's what I was. 
Gatzel there. Because obviously very emotional, very tough night for uh, Crestview in a 70-26 loss. And you look at the Spartans and what they did, 33 points off of 18 Crestview turnovers they forced. Held the nice to 31% shooting. It, when you have that working against you, it's really hard to do anything positive. Well, uh, from an individual standpoint, Dorian Jones was outstanding today. He was 7 of 10 from the three-point line for his 25 points today. He also had four steals and an assist, and the young man's a sophomore. He is extremely talented, as are his teammates, and it just got away from Crestview today. So Richmond Heights wins the Division IV State Championship, 49-game winning streak, still intact. That'll carry over to next season as the Spartans go back-to-back -back in state titles. Crestview Knights having a tremendous season. They finished one win short of the state title, but again, they reach places that a lot of teams don't get to. And here's Coach Essler. He's got to console his seniors because it's the last time they get to play together. Not only is it a losing day, but seeing those seniors go is always very difficult. Congratulations to Crestview Absolutely. on a terrific season overall as they finish as the Division IV state runners-up. When we return, Ottawa Glandorf looks for the Division III state title. We'll have highlights of their contest coming up right here on WOSN. Welcome back to UD Arena. Patrick Hamler, Mark Shine, wrapping up our coverage of high school basketball for the season. This is it, Mark. Hard to believe. This is it. We're done. You wake up on Monday and you're depressed. No more high school basketball until <laughs> next November. Yeah, it's going to be a while before we have any, any kind of basketball action, but we wrap it up at the state championship, which is a great way to wrap it up as we talk about Ottawa Glandorf. Highlights from the OG Titans brought to you by Ultimate Outdoor. Thank you for uh, their support of OG Titan basketball all season long. Ottawa Glandorf back in the state again, third straight year. You know, just even if nothing else happens, that's a heck of an accomplishment. It really is, and they played double overtime yesterday to get here and now they've got to play just 24 hours later and try to compete at a very high level again. Four of their five players played 38 plus yes. minutes in that double overtime game. Uh, meanwhile, the team that they played against Luther and East had a pretty easy victory as well. So opportunity to rest their starters. And it seemed like that would have an impact on this one as we bring you the highlights in this one between OG and Luther and East. Titans lined up and ready to go. And this would be a back and forth matchup Throughout, Theo Mag off the pass from Schrader. He attacks in Mag, playing tough, playing hurt pretty much the entire playoff run, but he makes it happen there. Great young man, he had a really good tournament. And then they had to go change defenses because of what he's doing right here. Colin White, Theo Mag, and then Colin White had a bit of a slow start in this one, but he puts it in. That's his first bucket. Then Caden Erford uh, had a better contest tonight than he did the other night, getting it inside to Mag. Mag having to work really hard, turnaround shots good. He's got six points and they're playing man to man. They're gonna go one through one to try to take that away. So White with the long distance dime, Erford with the three ball in the corner pocket. He would finish with 10 points on the night. Good shooter from the perimeter. He's got just a junior, gonna have a really good senior year as well. Now Hunter Steck, Schulte hunting, look from space and he just decides to make his own. Off balance hook is good. Steck Schulte had a wonderful tournament. Again, more than 30 minutes today and only turned the ball over twice in the entire state tournament. Now White kicking back to Steck Schulte and his three ball is good. Then time winding down in the first half. Titans down by double digits, but not anymore. Colin White, long three to beat the buzzer at the half and build some momentum for OG heading into halftime. They really did on an assist pass from Steck Schulte. Now we go to third quarter action. Steck Schulte from the corner. He makes the three, cutting the lead down from 34 to 27 and then White getting the steal throwing it down as the OG fans responded to this one this one was practically uh, Supreme Court South tonight well you know what between OG and Crestview they made the state tournament this weekend fan wise Irvin scoring baseline making it 42 to 34 then Levi Unterbrink three ball knocks that one making it 45 to 37 Credit to Luther and East, though, every time something happened, they had an answer. They did. An OG shot 11 of 24 from the three-point line, but they gave up a lot of things in transition today, especially against that zone. White had a corner three, then Steck Schulte hitting a corner three, cutting into that lead, making it 60 to 51. Now White driving, hitting. Steck Schulte, another big three. It was down to a five-point game, then a dunk in there. Trying to make this one as close as possible. It was a 10-point game, but OG just kept fighting. They fought to the bitter end. Three ball there, making it 65-61. That's as close as they get to Luther and East comes away with the 67-61 win in this one. Uh, they went 1-3-1 one, one zone, and Cody Head was just outstanding on the top of the 1-3-1 one, one zone. Made all types of ball reversal different, difficult. He had 19 points. He had five rebounds. He had three steals. Cody Head was a difference today. 
Luther East with the six-point win and held OG. We'll talk a little about that just in a second. 41% from the field. Luther East, 30, 55%. <clears throat> yeah, just same kind of things that I, that I talked about yesterday. Uh, I'm going to bring up again today because I, I just think as a coach, all you can ask for is guys to leave it all in the court. And, and our guys fought, scratched, clawed. They did everything within their power to put ourselves in a position to win this game. We knew our backs were kind of against the wall. Uh, and we were trying to do a couple different things to, to kind of slow them down. Um, initially, you know, I, I thought the game had to be in the 40s, high 40s, you know, for us to, 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 be, um, to be successful. And Luther Nice is just really good, you know. And, and sometimes you hate to say it as a coach and, and as a player, but you, you got to tip your cap to them. They're really, really good. And not only are they really good, they played really well today. They made a lot of shots. They switched defenses. Coach made a great call on switching to the 1 3 1. We talked about it a little bit today in, uh, in our shoot around. But to be honest with you, it was something that we hadn't really seen a lot on film. And you know, now I'm kicking myself in the head. You know, thinking about that, we, we did not attack that very well. And, you know, as, as a coach, I take that up full responsibility for that. I didn't put these guys in the situation and in the positions uh, to be successful. But like I said, when you got really talented players against you with the length that they had, um, and then you put to, on top of that guys that can really play, and you know, we dug ourselves a hole that, you know, we couldn't get out of today. Questions? How much 131 do you actually see in the course of a year? Because I see a lot of basketball in West Central, not Well, we don't see a whole lot of one three one zone, and we definitely don't see it with six ten, six seven, six seven, and arms that go from one side of the key, you know, from the three point line to the other. And uh, and I think that was we played on our heels, and uh, we went we tried to play east and west. And you know, as much as you preach to guys and you talk about you know we're going to do this, this, and this, that's easy as a coach to say. You know, and these guys did everything they could. I thought as the game went on, at halftime we kind of regrouped. Uh, we made a couple little adjustments, and those adjustments I thought opened some avenues. Um, but even some of those avenues that we had, um, for whatever reason tonight, we, we couldn't get that break that we needed to finish. And, uh, you know, like I said, you know, uh, it wasn't due to lack of effort. It wasn't due to these guys not laying it all on the line. Um, you know, sometimes, you know, you can be bet by a better team. And, you know, Unfortunately, I had to be in the state championship. Tyson, you had to be kind of happy. You got your big guy in foul trouble. Kind of bench a few times, but you always seem to have somebody to put in there that was just about as long. Yeah, you know, they, well, I, you look at their, their numbers going into the season, you know, one's average 19, one's like at 17, one's at 13. Um, you know, we thought 35 points between the three of them, that'd be really good. And, and I think we, we pretty much did that. Um, you know, we, we held McCullough up pretty good. I mean, that was the number that we were shooting for. Um, but man, they had a couple guys really step up. I thought the point guard, Bruce, really came in and uh, he had a couple of huge shots. He was, you know, automatic at the line there. I don't know if he missed he six or seven from the line. And, and that's what makes him special. I mean, they got D1 guys all over the court. And then you got, you know, you do a pretty good job of containing some of those guys. And then somebody like that comes in there that, you know, kind of pick your poison. And, uh, you know, that's a sign of a really good team. Coach, how difficult is it to, I know you guys play a lot of back-to-backs in your area, but how difficult is it to play um, two teams of that caliber when the margin of error is so small in these games? I'm not going to sit up here and make, a, make an excuse about the, the difficulty of coming back from yesterday's game, but, you know, to have to come back, it would have been really nice to have that extra day of prep and extra day of rest. We exerted so much energy yesterday to beat a really, really good Afrocentric team that, um, you know, I, I know these guys were, were tired. I know they were beat up. Um, you know, and so we do play, I mean, we typically play Friday, Saturday, so that, that's not anything out of the norm. Um, I don't know if we played an Afrocentric and then a Luther East on a Friday, Saturday. Um, you know, that's, that's a whole different game. Coach, you had no uh, quit, uh, as we've seen all year, uh, down double digits with a minute change, and then you battle back. And, 
all was real and uh, just testament to your guys. Yeah, I, that's who we are. That's we're tough SOBs, and uh, you know that's something that we might not have a roster full of Division One athletes and scholarship guys. But we got a bunch of guys that are going to do everything within their power to represent OG. And uh, I'll take a group of guys like that any day of the week. I'm looking at two seniors up here that have dedicated themselves, their bodies, their time to, to represent you know, our two communities. And they've done it in the, just the best way possible. Colin is maybe the, the most talented kid to ever come through Putnam County. And you never know that just talking to him. He's humble, he's a hard worker, he's a leader. So we lost on the court today, but we're gonna win in life. And uh, you know, I'm very, very proud of these guys. I'm proud to call them my players. They're gonna be my friends when they graduate. We don't have a friend. We're not friends right now until they graduate. It's, it's, it's love, it's, it's respect, and uh, very thankful. Thank you to head coach Tyson McLaughlin. And you know, it's, it's always difficult to watch the, the runners up presentation because it's always the, the goal is a little shorter than you wanted it to be. You, you watch the other team get the state championship, but still Ottawa Glandorf putting together just a tremendous season, uh, a tremendous couple of seasons, really. Well, Coach McLaughlin said some really good things in the presser at the end, but the, the painful look on him at the beginning and the painful look on his players, you know how much it meant to them to expend so much physical and emotional energy, have such a high goal to get here and then come up a little bit short. It was a painful thing to watch, but tomorrow morning those young men will wake up and go, you know what? We really did a lot of good things this season and today too. Yeah, you look back, the look back on this. Runners up in the state championship is is certainly nothing to sneeze at. And uh, Coach McLaughlin said he took responsibility for not making the adjustment for the one three one zone that they threw at him. But he also said that there were a few guys on that team that if they spread their arms out on that zone three, they go from three point line to three point line. There's not a whole lot you can do against that. Their shots were contested. They had to shoot from deeper than they wanted to. Sometimes there were no open looks trying to drive to the rim because of the size inside. So that that is absolutely correct. And Patrick, when the game was over, they passed out the medals and the trophies, and OG did the classy thing and stayed and watched their opponents get their trophy, and then they walked off the floor, and I, I saw Colin White and I saw Caden Erford hug each other underneath the basket, and those guys are juniors coming back, and you just kind of wonder what that conversation was all about. I'll bet it was positive. Absolutely. Ottawa Glandorf. Uh, I know it's easy for, for the fans, even some of us in the media, to go, hey, well, they'll be back here next year. You just never know until you put everything together. But if you're an OG fan, and if you're a Crestview fan, you got to feel pretty good about OG's chances to come back next well, year. Well, and the sad thing is there's a bunch of seniors who are leaving who won't have that opportunity. They've been here two years in a row. You know, guys who played extremely well, guys who played limited minutes but pushed people in practice, and those guys are not going to have that opportunity next year, but they should be congratulated for what they did over the course of their senior year and their career. Tremendous season for Ottawa Glandorf and Luther and East, of course, doing a terrific job. It just seemed like every time Ottawa Glandorf, we saw them do it all season long, they, they hit some shots, like they were going to generate some momentum. Luther and East just had an answer. They shot 55% from the field tonight. They, they did. They shot well from the three-point line, and they made enough free throws late to win the basketball game, and congratulations to them. They answered the bell when they had to. They played extremely well, and particularly late in the game when OG made the run at them, they did what they had to do to succeed. Ottawa Glandorf runners up in Division Three. Crestview runners up in Division Four. Congratulations to all of our athletes in the area on terrific seasons. Whether you made it to state or not, maybe Bowling Green was your last stop, or Kettering Fairmont, or whatever, uh, a tremendous season for everyone involved. Well, that is going to wrap up our coverage of the state yep. tournament from the University of Dayton and our coverage of basketball. Mark, once again, always a pleasure uh, to, to be and do this with I, you. I, I've been blessed. I've been to the state tournament 48 times in a row. I've been blessed to have an opportunity to do that. But the real blessing is being with WSN and what we stand for as a network when we bring high school telecasts showing young men and young women in their best possible light. And we're always grateful for the opportunity to do that. We can't do this without the support of a lot of people behind the scenes. Zach Keith, of course, helping us stay on the air and making sure that we have great state coverage, which Zach does pretty much every time we're at state for anything. Ryan Chadwald also helping us out, doing a lot of wonderful things. And, of course, we can't bring this kind of coverage without your support financially. Consider making a gift to WTLW, WOSN, so that we can can keep bringing you high school coverage exactly like what you've seen this weekend and all throughout the high school season. Well, we move on to spring, as we said, for the Rushi uh, broadcast. 
Baseball starts Monday. Baseball's coming, <laughs> softball's coming, track meets are coming. We just move outdoors and move into a different venue and keep right on going. We look forward to bringing it to you. That's going to wrap up our coverage from here at the UD Arena for Mark Shine and our entire WOSN staff. I'm Patrick Hamler. Thank you so much for watching, and we'll see you next time here on WOSN. Goodbye.